One of the ancient traditions of Ramadan in Turkey is attending a shadow theatre play. And there's two characters who have been capturing the minds and hearts of the public for decades. Elif Berketli went along to meet them. It was long before the arrival of TV or even radio when shadow theatre was a popular form of entertainment in the Ottoman Empire. One particular pair of puppets being the most loved, Hajibat and Karagos. Hundreds of people would gather to watch these two fun and contrasting characters reflected on a curtain. Karagos is the bodhi, unrefined commoner, while Hajivat is the educated, well-mannered, smooth-talking aristocrat. Together, they frequently find themselves entangled in strange and comical situations. The plays were widely performed in coffee shops, gardens and private houses between the 17th and 19th centuries, at circumcisions, feast festivals, but especially during Ramadan. It still survives today in a toned-down version and usually for kids. Only around 50 artists continue the tradition. One of them is puppeteer Cengiz Özek. I started when I was little. I was 13 and I didn't find them. Karagöz and Hajivat found me and our friendship has been ongoing since then. I've taken them to more than a hundred countries. Özek tries to continue the tradition not only by performing plays, but also organizing exhibitions. He tries to pass on his knowledge at everyday places like this shopping center in Istanbul. According to many researchers, it's the 500th year of Karagöz this year. So we have this exhibition. Their story is illustrated and a lot of puppets are showcased. All of them are made by me, not only Hajivat and Karagöz, also the other characters, the drunkard Tuzsuz Deli Bakir, the long-necked Uzun Efe, the opium addict Kanbur Tiryaki, an eccentric dwarf Alta Karish Bebiruhi, and Bloody Nigar, a rather flirtatious woman. The puppets with jointed limbs are about 30-40 centimeters. They're usually made up of cow or camel skin, and skin is painted with either Indian ink or natural paints, later embroidered with sharp blades. Finally, the pieces are put together with ropes. The puppeteer does everything, manipulating the characters, which are fastened to a stick, vocalizing them in different dialects, and sometimes even playing the symbols. This is the backstage. Traditionally, there used to be no separate room for this area. The puppeteer would only stand behind a frame that holds a white, translucent cloth. In the past, this used to be a candle and the artist was accompanied by an apprentice. But in modern times, as you see, the situation is a bit different. The origin of these characters is unknown and it's still a mystery whether they've ever even existed. They were probably not living people. There are more than 14 legends about it. One of them is the most commonly known. So, according to legend, they were construction workers in a big mosque project in the city of Bursa. Their tendency to clown around on the worksite got them into trouble and they were ultimately executed for distracting people. Much loved and sorely missed by the people, they were memorialized as amusing puppet characters. This legend is so widely believed that a monumental tomb to them still stands in Bursa today. Despite this being the digital age, do you think this form of storytelling is still relevant? Of course it is hard to keep on performing it in today's world. First of all, as I have always argued, we should keep the topics, jokes, accents and everything up to date. Because when it was in its golden years, what Shadow Theatre did well was to give the public a voice and to mention the current issues of the day. Why not update it now? not only the language or the content, we should follow a graphic way of storytelling. Because people are used to computer aesthetics now, we should always be alert and update Karagöz and Hajivat. We shouldn't be unfair to them. I always have this in mind. They may not be as popular as they once were in their heyday, but they've stood the test of time. Not just because of their entertainment value, but also due to the devotion of the puppeteers behind them. Elif Bereketli, TRT World, Istanbul.